Hi everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, solve quadratic equation when there is a common factor. Okay. So um, before I sh um, before I go and show you how to solve, I want to make sure that you have the steps down. Okay. So first one, the first step is to you want to make sure to write the equation, the quadratic equation in standard form, a s squared plus b s plus c equals zero. You're going to factor the left side to get two factor, and don't forget to set it equal to zero. Step three, you're going to apply the zero product property. Well, if two factor equal to zero, it means that either, uh, either one of those two factor is equal to zero, okay? Because a number times zero, anything times zero is zero, okay? So that's why you want to take each factor, it's set it equal to zero, and then you solve for x. And uh, use two single braces to write out, to write inside the solution, uh, the, the, the value for x. Which, which we, um, the value of x represents the x-intercept. Okay, it means that the, if the solution are real, uh, it means that the, uh, the, uh, the parabola crosses the x value, uh, the, uh, the x-axis at both given x values, okay? So thank you for listening to my beautiful voice. So let's continue. <laughs> Okay, so I gave you this quadratic equation. Remember, the first step is to rewrite the quadratic equation in standard form, okay? So the right side needs to be equal to zero. So what we need to do here in order to have the right side equal to zero, okay? We are right, you're going to add 18x on both sides. Okay, add 18x on both sides. Then now, negative 18x plus a positive, uh, 18x add up to zero, okay? So now there's no like terms. Okay, alert, 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 do not combine, okay? Because there's no like terms. So you leave everything alone, but make sure you start with the term into high x exponent, which is three x squared first. And then you have the plus 18x, okay? Then plus 24. Okay, so now we are going to continue. You're done with step one. So step two is to want to factor the left side. Okay, before we factor, do you see a common factor? Okay, what do I call common factor? Do you see a number by which three and 18 and 24 are divisible by? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, I hope you can see it, it is what? Yes, three, 18 and 24, okay, are divisible by the number, pop, 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 okay, by the number, Three, but you can make x square alone by dividing or by factoring out three or by dividing um, by three. So let me pull out the three, okay? So what am I going to write inside the, the, um, inside the parenthesis, inside the factor? So three x squared divided by three is x squared. 18 x divided by, divided by three is plus six x. 24 divided by three is going to be plus positive eight plus eight, okay? So now, because you have, I can show you another way, okay? Because you identify, okay, let me write that here. There's another way you could have done it. Why? You could have just divide, uh, divide everything by positive three, okay? The reason is because you have the equal a zero, okay? It's not anymore an expression like this, it's a, you have a, an equation. So what you can do then, you're going to divide every number. So whatever you do on the left, make sure you do on the right, you're going to divide it by three like that, okay? And then you end up with x squared plus six x plus eight equal zero. Okay, zero divided by three is zero, okay? Because the same as zero times one third, which is zero. Okay, now, here, we factor out the, the three, right? So if you want, you can just now decide to divide now by three on both sides. So now we are left with x squared plus, because three goes into three once. So x squared plus six x plus eight equals zero, okay? So now we have our quadratic equation gap being simplified. So uh, there's no any more, yeah, you cannot do anything. There's no, there's no other number you can divide by one, six, and eight. So you leave everything alone, okay? So let's now do steps two, let's factor. Okay, how do I factor? 
the way I like to set it up is you want to find two number by add to B. What is the number for B6? Okay, and the same two number needs to multiply to A times C. The number for A here is going to be one. It cannot be zero. Over if A was zero, it means it will be on just six X plus eight. So A here, the coefficient of X y is one. So you want to do A one times C, which is um, eight. So can you think of two numbers that multiply together, you get positive eight and you add together and you get six. Okay, can I choose one and eight? I can think of one and eight. Yeah, they multiply together to eight, but do they add to six? No, so I have to find another pair. Okay, what about two and four? Okay, two times four is eight, and when you add them together is six. Yes, so the two found number is going to be two and four, two and four, okay? Why? Because two times four is eight, two plus uh, four is six. So what do I need then? So what you're going to do next is, you're going to replace the middle term with the two found numbers. Oh, I don't need anything here. Okay. Okay, so I replace the two found, uh, the six X with a two found number, which is two and four. So make sure you include the X, Y is two X plus four X add up to six X, okay? So you're not changing the equation, you're just rewriting it. So it's easier for us to factor either by grouping or by using the box method. So let me do the box method. I'm going to draw a box. Okay, oh, so I forgot the square here. So you have x squared and always write x on the top left and the constant eight bottom right box or corner. And you can write two x here and then four x here. The order does not matter for the two middle terms, okay? So now we want to look horizontally and you're going to factor out the number by which each row is divisible by or the, or the common factor. So you have x squared and two x. So x squared and two x are both divisible by x, okay? And the second row, so four x and eight are both divisible by, it cannot be eight, okay? Because eight does, does not go into four evenly because you get the fraction and decimal, okay? So it cannot be eight and it cannot be two because two is the lowest uh, number, okay? So you want to use four then, okay? Then you're going to look vertically. So what is the common factor between x squared and 4x? Or the number that is divisible by x squared as well as by 4x at the same time. So the number is x, okay? And you can check your work, right? x times x is x squared, four times x is 4x. And here, one number is it, um, 2x and 8 divisible by is going to be four. No, 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 it cannot be four, oops. Okay, because two does not, four does not go into two evenly. So it cannot be four, oh, like that. So it has to be the number two, okay? So now what are the factors then? So you're going to use the term on the outside, represent the factor. So the factor is going to be um, X minus four and then X plus two. Don't forget to equal to zero, okay? So if we want to do the grouping, uh, the method by grouping, Okay, so let me write the method by grouping right here. So you have x squared. So you're going to group the left two terms together and the right two terms together. Because 4x is positive, I can just, just put the parentheses in front of 4x. But if 4x were negative, make sure you put the negative inside the parentheses, okay? Don't leave the negative out. Okay, so now we're going to identify, Jose, what is the common factor? The number by which x squared and 2x are both divisible by is going to be x. So what am I going to write inside this factor right here? So x squared divided by x is x. 2x divided by x is going to be um, plus two. Okay, now let me continue right here for the right, the term on the right. So what number is, um, is four x and eight uh, divisible by? Okay, it's a divisible by four, so I can put four. So what am I going to write inside the factor? You take 4x and divide by 4, which is x, okay? And then you take 8 divided by 4, which is 2. And you can multiply 4 times x is 4x, 4 times 2 is 8. And you can do the same here. x times x is x, where x times 2 is 2x. So I'm, I know I'm doing everything right because um, you see the factor on the left match with the factor on the right. Okay. Don't forget the equal to zero. So we're going to pull it out the common factor again, which is x plus 2 right here, 
And what are you going to do with the leftover, which is x plus four and plus uh, no x and plus four? You're going to write it into the as as in the sec, um, it will be our second factor. So x plus four equal to zero. Okay. So I'll show you do is the method by um, using the box method and by grouping. So now um, the final step is not the final step. The next step after factoring the left side, you want to apply the zero product property. What does it mean? So if two factor equal to zero, it means either one of those factors is equal to zero. Either is x minus four, which is equal to zero, or x plus two, which is equal to zero. Okay. So let me write. So make sure you set it each factor equal to zero and you solve for x. To solve for x here, you're going to add four on both sides. And right here, you're going to subtract two on both sides. Oh, I don't know why I'd end up with the minus. It's a plus, oops. Okay, can you fix that for me? I apologize. So let's fix that. Um, so again, make sure you write the problem correctly otherwise end up with the wrong solution. So it's plus, so you want to minus both sides, okay? Why? Because it's, the factor is x plus four. So if you don't see a plus, put a plus, okay? So, and then the second factor is x plus two. Okay, so now you're going to, we, um, the new equation is going to be x equal negative four or x equal negative two. So I can rewrite this and we're using two single braces like this. And then last we start, I like to set the lowest x value, which is negative four, because negative four is far away from zero compared to negative two. Okay. And what does what's x value represent? What's x value here represent the x intercept? Okay. So you see that the parabola, if I was supposed to sketch a parabola, okay, so I just sketch a parabola, right? So the solutions represent the x-intercept. So the parabola is going to, going to cause x-axis at negative four and negative two. And I was able to identify the y-intercept. I used the y-intercept from the original equation, which is 24. I didn't use the one from the simplified one, which is eight. Okay, so when x is zero, that's when you have the y-intercept. I use the one, the original equation here, 24. Okay, but they should have the same y, they're going to have the same x-intercept, okay? So I just use the original equation. And I know the parabola opens up because the, the coefficient of x squared, which is a, is just positive, uh, which is, sorry, positive three. So the coefficient of x squared is three, is positive. So one of the number for a is positive, the parabola, we're going to be uh, looking upward. Up. If the A were negative, the parabola would be going down, downward. Okay, thank you for listening to my video. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.